Hello, everybody, and thank you for being on this stream with us. You don't know the technical difficulties we've been through <laughs> just for you to be able to, to enjoy this video. This is the demo for the rec, and I'm going to play it right now. Um, we are looking at a very nice uh, introduction. And with me are three other team members of the team. So I'm Florent. Uh, I was a, a writer on uh, the rec, and I was working on that part with Coralie, my sister. Coralie? Hi there. Yeah, it's you. And uh, as we wrote a lot of things, then we had to record some of them and cast people to do that and uh, then direct them so that they, they act uh, well. And that was Sarah's job. Sarah? Hello, it's me. Hi, Sarah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, all that doesn't make for an actual game. And some of the things that you <laughs> need in the game is uh, cinematics and nice uh, frames and animations. And that was Peggy's job Hi, on this game. So glad to be here. Yeah, we are, we are so glad to have you. Yeah, and I'm so happy to be able to finally show the game. So, the rec is uh, at its heart a visual novel. So we need to have those um, those um, very cool moments uh, that are um, of Junon. I'm sorry, I'm a little troubled because I have some feedback in my ear, but that's going to be okay. Um, we need to have Junon, and uh, it's the main character of the game, and she's in a very bad situation to begin with. We met up with her in a, a hospital because she has to join her mother, who's sick. And as we will discover later in the game, it's not the only issue she has. And one of the, one of the first things we had to do uh, when we wanted people to bound with uh, Junon was to find an actress to impersonate uh, Junon, to, to bring her to life, basically. And so, uh, together with Sarah, we listened to a lot of actresses. And Sarah, I know, uh, yeah, I was yeah. trying to yeah. think of how many. I was like, I wonder if I can filter how many, but it was definitely over 100. It was yes. 100 digits, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't Possibly. <laughs> but you I, listen to a lot. Like, yeah. I'm so happy um, you were there because in the end I was like, I, I can't make the difference between all those very talented actresses. But how how did you? How was the process to you? Um. Yeah, I don't know. It was. It, we, I I don't know what, what I was listening for specifically, and I think it's that's probably a good thing. Um. You know. But I did. But I just know I was. For, I do remember very, very distinctly writing you something very cautious when I did finally hear Charlotte's um, Charlotte uh, Desac's uh, audition. Um, I I like wrote you something very kind of like cautious and thoughtful and like I think I think this is very promising. But in the actual casting sheet, you can still see in my column of notes like oh my god! Like I got so excited. I got so excited. She was so immediately like. I was, cons you know, because because uh, Junon has um, has a lot of struggles in her life and has had periods of, of feeling dissociative and not to spoil things, but she's, you know, she's had it rough. But I still, I don't think that that's incompatible with someone who's really vibrant and really earthy and um, and all of those. Charlie just really leapt off the, if you, I guess you would say leapt off the page, but leapt into my ear. Um, and I just found her immediately arresting and engaging, and and I was so thrilled that we when we heard her audition. It just I, I was like after all this time, it was like such a great aha moment. Yeah, <gasps> yeah, yeah. I must admit, to begin with, I was like, oh, okay, this is interesting, but that's not what I had in mind. Yeah. But yeah. when I when I, we heard her behind the mic, and then when I saw the result in game, I was really really convinced, and I'm really super happy that we went with her. It's really it's a it's a great actress. I, I, actually, all the cast of the game is. Really mm -hmm. great. Um, I'm so thrilled. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you for trusting me. Ah, you will come. You will come. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Peggy, we can we can see uh, some of the game as as we are uh, advancing uh, in the demo, and um, there's this very cool uh, stop, almost stop motion like uh, animation. Uh, so I I know the reasons why we went that path, but could you tell the the audience why we decided to go with the stop motion and and that kind of animation yeah sure um so at first it seemed like a very option um, like very simple solution because like 
Stop motion tends to get a bit simpler than like full animation uh, for, the re for the very reason that you don't need to be as cautious uh, with the timing as you would be uh, with like full on animation. So since the, the characters are always like in wait for the player's action, like uh, whenever you need to pick up a, a, a line of dialogue, uh, you need the, the characters to actually wait for the line of dialogue to come up. So we needed to like find out a way uh, for the characters to actually wait uh, until the player would just like go on with the story. And uh, doing so with loops is quite a big problem because like we have a lot of poses within the game. Like sometimes the characters are laying down, sometimes they're like sitting somewhere and uh, we can't like really have animation for all of those situations. So what we basically do is that we have some kind of a program that basically adds up um, like eye blinking and so subtle head bobs and movements on top of like still poses. And the fact that it's stop motion kind of makes it like basically binds it together uh, quite well. Uh, it seemed like a very simple solution when I tell it, but actually uh, getting Unity, like your game engine, to actually work in stop motion is quite a big challenge. You, you need to basically go around every single existing tool that exists, like if you want it to work the way you intend to do. And it's this, there might still be like some, you know, small glitches from time to time because it's so actually hard to make it work. Yeah. I didn't want to mention that because I didn't want to twist the knife, but yeah, some places are still. But we'll, we'll figure that out, I'm sure we'll find ways to. But it, also it's very light, and also I think that uh, one of the main influences uh, when working on the rec is, was cinema, of course, because uh, Junon is a screenwriter, uh, a failed screenwriter, but still a screenwriter. And so uh, all the all the idea was to work on, on the frames and the way the the images were composed and so that it, that doesn't bother me that much and actually i think it's stronger for us to go with uh, the, that stop motion style because it looks like uh, what you would do when you when you were uh, when you would be imagining a movie in your head you would see a series of still images and that would that's how the the, the story would come to life in your head so i think that's one of the cases where uh, the aesthetic serves, really serves the purpose and serves the narrative. So I think that really works. It's just really great. And speaking uh, uh, of, uh, uh, sorry, Perry, Peggy, it's sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, I would like to add that um, I was in basically in charge of the editing of the game. Like I picked up a lot of the uh, actual shots and the way that they chain up. And uh, looking at comics was actually quite a cool inference because, because the characters don't really move around so much. So it's kind of like in comics. In comics, uh, pictures are very still, so you need to figure out how to chain them. And uh, like taking inspiration from comics instead of cinema makes it makes for a better editing, basically. It kind of works visually because you don't have to rely so much on movement and you can just rely um, on like visual storytelling and framing. So it's a bit different actually, but it really like enriched uh, the language of the game, I would say. Yeah, so I yeah, agree. I agree, and I think uh, storyboarding also com comes to mind, of course, when, when you, when you think about all that. But going back to the story, um, Coralie, uh, we work together on this, so I came with the with the base scenario, and uh, you all, of course, you <laughs> you read it, and you had a lot of things to say. <laughs> Not all of them were necessarily positive things. So yeah. can you can you describe the back and forth that we that we had on the on the, on, the, on that part of the work? Um, actually, to me, it was very easy to uh, to work uh, on your project because uh, I, I don't know how to say. Oh, this um, is the accident. Oh, sorry. I'm not sure. <laughs> you had uh, you had something very strong, but um, but it was as if uh, I had plenty of space. To, to come and play with you. If I can make a metaphor, metaphor it would be the metaphor that I, that I can find. Uh, remember, we tried a few years ago to work together uh, already, and it was a mess because- We I were not we, ready. We, we, we were not no, ready. No, <laughs> we were not ready. It was like a lot of uh, tension in like mm -hmm. the, the place, actually, the place that we could take each other in the process of writing. And I don't know why this time it was very easy and very smooth and it was really like like a game. I mean, like 
I never wrote for a game before, and um, and it was very um, a, a very um, happy and playful experience. And um, I think that the the thing that I loved the most was that because we have such a a, a connected history because we are brother and sister. Um, we had like it was very fluid the way we um, we decided ideas. I didn't feel like it was a back and forth actually. It came a lot from our discussions about our family, about our past, about things that we live together, that things that we saw, the experience that we saw, but in different angle. And so I just had to emerge in all those memories or all those discussions, and then take bits of your imagination, of mine, and mix them together. And um, I really enjoyed this process actually because it was really like building our relationship around writing um, and finding images like, uh, yeah. I, I completely agree and I think it's one of the reasons why it was so easy is that we had uh, so much of that ground uh, life experience in common so when I would say uh, I think it would be nice to try to evoke that kind of feeling you would uh, very quickly say okay I know exactly what you mean because we've been through things together in life and I think that's I hope that's conveyed in the story and I hope that players will be able to to feel to feel that too and I, I think that's the case. I hope. I hope it is. Yeah, and then I was, I was away while you were, you were talking. I was thinking also. We had, you have sometimes the same kind of idiotic uh, sense of humor, <laughs> and so also that was maybe what what would work sometimes, like to make a joke. You would make a joke, and I would laugh, and then I would laugh, but say okay no this is so bad but i love it so i would incorporate it and push it further and further and uh, yeah. and so and and actually i think it's um uh it's a very it comes from a place of confidence between us and of that's what of trust uh, yes trust that's really what i enjoyed because uh, i never thought i would be able to the write as easily um i mean it's like um, I don't know how to say it. It, it, it was not. Um, yeah, 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 that's it. It, it was okay. It was not easy because it's like I don't pretend it's uh, like uh, a work of art uh, like that uh, I wrote in two days. Uh, no, what I mean is like, um, yeah, it's it was really a, a smooth process. Cool. Say, it say, sounds yeah. like a very having having to voice directed the lines like a, the the voice of the I mean obviously the different characters have their own voices but as a as a writerly voice it sounds very coherent and and it like that smooth and there's no nothing jarring there it feels like a very unified writerly voice that's, that's great sure. because when you when you two, two people working on writing something it's it's the best compliment you can get really that uh, it feels like one one person wrote it yeah. And Sarah, mm -hmm. about yeah. about uh, voice directing, um, so the game alternates between uh, what we call the last day, uh, where uh, Junou is actually living through very difficult moments in her life in the hospital, and reminisc reminiscing her memories. Uh, mm -hmm. So how did you did, did you try to direct the actresses and more specifically uh, Charlotte, because Charlotte is being Junou, differently, uh, whether she was in a memory or she was in the last day? Um, well, well, the big thing was just holding all of the context in place because the game is, has a very fractured kind of montage feel. Um, and so resetting ourselves to the point at which picking up a conversation halfway through or picking up a, a, you know, a moment in her development or in her life halfway through was like a little bit of a, we were just sort of, which is when I would lean on you and especially. Um, and then we did sort of have some touchstones because as she revisits these, uh, hopefully it's not a spoiler, but as she revisits these memories, she has some, she moves forward in her personal growth just a bit at a time um, and kind of sees things with a new, you know, helpful perspective to her. Um, so we did ultimately have a gear, you know, as a voice actor, you're always kind of like building little gears, like in a car of like, oh, this is my thinking. This is my like memory, thoughtfulness, kind of like slight objective way of looking at my own memory voice. Um, and so I would kind of refer back to that touchstone if I had a strip of that that I really liked in particular, um, particularly to cap off a memory, 
um, as Junon was like, oh, interesting. That's a, I hadn't looked at it that way before. I might play that snippet back for Charlize or something um, just to make sure that we're in that kind of like same intimate narration zone. Um, so to answer your question, yes, <laughs> I did. <laughs> So that's that was amazing uh, a process to witness. I had really no idea how to. And what I really lo loved about how you directed the actresses and and actor because the, there's one guy in this story. <laughs> yeah, right. It's, yeah. it's, it's how you were you were so uh, inclined to find very vivid examples and so just imagine you're in that situation and that would work all every time because they would just uh, feel like completely understand what you mean and that that would bring them in the right direction to act the way you wanted them to act and that worked very well thank you no, I, I think really acting is poetics and so I use poetics to kind of because if you can't you can't mic something that most actors as, as an actor myself I know that like being micromanaged sort of removes your creative en engine you're just sort of feel like a marionette instead and that you can hear that someone feels disconnected from it or it's not coming from a place of ownership so for me I'm I'm frequently reaching for imagery and other kind of ways that kind of get someone that gives someone a flash of insight or inspiration or just a vibe that they can or flavor that they can tap into um and then the rest of the the rest of the delivery comes from themselves um so if i get if i get you know too technical at times or if i get very like prescriptive um that's i, I just know from my own experience how kind of imprisoning and disheartening it can be, <laughs> which isn't to say that I wouldn't get technical. There are times when technical direction is is called for, but um, but that's my style anyway. So so all the more lucky that actors knew what the heck I was talking about. <laughs> and uh, especially across a culture, oh my god, they could have totally not known what I was talking about because I was suddenly speaking in touchstones that no one in France has. So lucky yeah. us. That was yeah, great. but that worked, and <laughs> it's true that the rec is a very French game, and uh, I'm happy that you were able to blend and practice your French also. Yes. And we're, we're nearing the end of the demo. So very quickly, Peggy, um, we have, uh, Juno is going to meet with uh, five different characters in the last day. And you worked a lot on, on trying to have those five uh, encounters being as different as possible. Do you have a favorite without spoilers? Do you have a favorite between the, the characters she's going to meet? I think there's one that is set on a rooftop, like, um, really far back, uh, far in the story, and uh, it really works uh, in a way that I really like because uh, it's a very contemplative moment. Like the characters are focused on the environment around them, and uh, that's not so much the case in the rest of the game. Like uh, a lot of the game is like the the setting is here for the characters to just move around and gather in their thoughts but there's this moment where the character is just like outwardly looking around them and just enjoying the present moment and like in terms of um, of directing and framing and animating this was so much fun and also it's also moments in the game where the characters realize things about themselves and their context around them and uh, it makes really it re a lot of sense to just open up the space exactly and see like more scenery more more light it's a very like um I, I don't know how to say it it's a very like clear moment uh in a sense mm -hmm. so and a f fun thing is that I, I basically went through the game in a linear fashion so i started with the beginning I and then i went on I to the end so i i basically door. uncovered the story as i was animating and directing it and so when it came to the end, I just had like the big twist in the end and just like realized what the game was about by just reading the, the dialogue and hearing dialogue over and over again. So yeah, it was quite yeah. a quite cool moment uh, I for remember. me to just like... <laughs> I remember you sent me a message and I was like, oh, I think I figured out what the game was about. And I was like, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that you understood that. It was great. It was, it was really one of the cool moments of the of the production yeah so player we, zero we we, we yeah. yeah exactly we, we reached the <laughs> end of the demo so that's it for today we will do that again when the full game launches until then you can of course people who are watching this stream you can of course play the demo add the game to your wish list and uh make some noise for us to gather <laughs> as many eyeballs as possible thanks you thank you for being there tonight thank you sarah coraline peggy and uh, i just can't wait to show you more of our game bye see, ya. Bye. see bye. you bye.